In this live martial arts training or self-defense training, we're gonna be talking about how to use the best self-defense weapons. And in this hand, I've got the Kali stick or the Screaming stick, and I wanted to show you, this is one of the best things you can use, a stick, because you have reach, you can reach out and hit, you can strike with extreme speed, you can jab, you can use the back side, come in and jab, you can strip things away, you can block, and like I always say, the wood doesn't bleed. So you can't get hurt, or the stick can't get hurt. It's worse if you don't have anything and you have to try to take that knife or defend against the knife. So the goal is to be able to use the stick. You have increased reach, you have increased dynamic strength power. It's a, a speed accelerator, it's a power accelerator, it's a force accelerator, but you're not always gonna have this stick available. So I wanted to show you real quick, good, well, good evening that you can, if you're not able to carry a stick with you, you can use something like this magazine, Survivor magazine, these guys look tough, right? And you simply roll really tightly. You're gonna get it as tightly as you can. And let's say you're sitting at the restaurant or you're in the hotel, you're getting ready to go out and walk and then something just doesn't feel right, doesn't seem right. You feel like there's some danger nearby and you see it, you see somebody with a knife or somebody's attacking or you don't know if they have a knife and you need something in your hand that allows you to address that threat. Something that you can then strike with, that you can jab with from the backside, jab with, come down on top and then if you have to, to defend against that knife with, you have what's called an improvised stick. So I wanted to show you, I've been talking a lot about the improvised sticks right, lately you just simply take a magazine or even a newspaper or a stack of papers, and again, you're just gonna roll it as tightly as you can, get that nice and tight, and then you just squeeze and hold it as tightly as you can. And this gives you a better option than just going after that knife with that open hand and that skin and flesh. All that stuff can get cut. And again, when you strike with it, and we practice with these, and they hurt, right? You can strike the nerves, you can strike the body, you come in with a jab, you go straight into the face, come into the face this way. That all hurts with this magazine that you might not normally think about. Yeah, absolutely, you can make practice nunchuck too. Um, but the point is, we're talking about the best self-defense tools, and I like the stick, I like the Kali or the Screamer stick, the Arnie stick, but you're not always gonna be able to carry that with you because it's obviously a weapon. The magazine you can carry with you all the time because it's obviously just a magazine you turn it into a self-defense tool that really works let me show you my second choice here which is going to be in this case it's a joe the joe martial arts staff but this doubles as a hiking stick or a walking stick or you can carry a hiking stick or a walking stick that doesn't look like this um yeah we oh yeah i can show you you mean how you bring it through this way, we can do that. We'll do that when we do bow staff later today. But from this position, I wanna show you that this walking stick, let's call this the hiking stick, right? You're out walking, you're allowed to carry this most places with you. It's non-threatening, but it is a very big stick. And the first thing that you can do with this is stepping in or pushing in with this hard ledge here, straight into the face, right? Or straight into the throat for self-defense. Straight into the solar plexus, and because you're holding it tightly and it's a big piece of wood or maybe it's a metal hiking stick, you're just increasing the strength that you already have in your body. Your natural strength is being all concentrated into that small tip. So that small tip has all that force generated in there and it's just striking. It's going in really in a powerful way, immediate, direct, and explosive. So this becomes a really good self-defense tool and from here, that's not all you do with it, right? You can spin and bring the backside in and it hits very hard. Now we go back to the threat. What do you do when there's a knife attack, right? Good, well, good morning. You have the reach advantage from the stick, from your hiking stick or your walking stick, in this case, the Joe. So you have in this position, reach advantage. You also have the ability to increase your power through that spin. And um, this thing's gonna break some bones. It's gonna at least disorient or stop the attack. It's gonna stop them from trying to get that knife in. From here, you can bring it up in this position. 
you still have a reach advantage. And then you just go, I missed it. <laughs> I didn't look at it. You go straight in and strike as hard as you can, right? Into the solar plexus, into the throat for self-defense, in through the face for self-defense, down into the groin, into the leg, or maybe it's that, uh, that wild animal or that vicious animal running around off the chain or whatever. You just defend yourself coming in this way. From this position, you can slide it up and then you have it now in this position. If you know how to spin, you can spin it into that position. That's a fancier way. But basically, from here to here, you can just take this hand off and now you have even more reach. And I love to talk about reach when it comes to self-defense, especially against a violent attack or a knife attack. I want as much room between me, as, as much distance between me and the other person. If I have a big stick and they have a knife, yeah, you never know. And this is the point. They might be coming at you. They might have a little extra confidence and that might be because you don't know and they do know that this is in their pocket and they come up and their goal is to take this out and before you see it, before you see it, put this into, every, into your body over and over again in a way that you can't survive. You simply can't survive because they can't put you back together from all those lacerations, all those cuts, all those slices in your organs and in your body. So before you even allow them to get that close, you create that distance, right? Just simply doing this. You slide it here, you bring it down with two hands. Two hands are always better than one when it comes to self-defense on a, a fighting stick, right? Because that fighting stick with two hands is a lot stronger and it's a lot more accurate. So from here, in this position, you can slide it up, grab it from the bottom, thrust, thrust, take out the leg, right on top of the head, and like you said, assuming they might have a knife. And you don't know, but why risk it? It's your right to defend yourself. And if you, and if you see the knife, you're gonna explosively go in and make that attack to start with anyway. Usually, whoever it is that moves first, you, because you're training, you're preparing for self-defense, whoever moves first has that advantage. So you have this move, and then you have pointing your thumb at the threat, pushing creating distance, striking the top of the head, coming around, coming around the other side, to the body, straight through in a horizontal strike. These are all legitimate, they're all very powerful. They can all be done with your hiking stick, your walking stick, or in this case, the Joe, and it's, it's disguised, it's a disguised self-defense tool. That's why they're so important. That's why, uh, aside from a gun, a concealed carry gun, which a lot of people cannot carry, because of where they live or do not want to carry or not, a, not comfortable with, don't have the appropriate training, anybody can carry this, right? So this gives you a lot of options. Now, let me show you in this video, because this is a short video, my absolute favorite for the self-defense tool that can go with you anywhere and everywhere you go and is the most disguised. And in this case, it is the walking cane. Now in the walking cane, I'm gonna lift this guy up a little bit. I read the other magazine. I was gonna show you this one because it's a little thicker. And when, uh, when you get a magazine like this, this thick, and you hit with that, they're, they're not indestructible. It's gonna fall apart after five or six strikes. But when you roll it up and you make an improvised stick to address that violent knife assault or that guy with a knife or even multiple attackers, punch this guy, hit that guy with the, the, um, your improvised stick. Come back through here and stick that up in, and it's not gonna cut him or anything, but it's gonna hit with so much force, it's gonna knock their wind out, it's gonna end the fight faster. But I wanna show you this walking cane. You know what, let me just drop the camera a little so you can see from here. Move it back. Make it too complicated, right? Let's say this is the threat, right? That's his groin. It's as simple as this. It's gonna be super, super simple, I'm gonna keep it simple with the hook facing out. Now this is a fighting cane. This is a dojo training cane. This is about 40 bucks, 45 or whatever, but it's not that expensive. It's made out of a hard wood. This is white oak. You oil it up all the time. You, you sand it down every once in a while. It's a training tool, but you can also carry it with you anywhere you go. You're walking, they come in a little too fast, and then you just bring that up, bring that in, support it, take the hook, 
And all of those motions for self-defense are very powerful, very explosive, immediate, direct, explosive, immediate, direct, explosive. You always want immediate. As soon as you see that threat, you want to hit him. Uh oh, I, I, I lost you. There we go. Hit him before he hits you. <laughs> you can see I just hit. There we go. I hit the camera. So we'll finish here, right? Try not to get too dizzy. So I smash the key here. Hold on. The key here, <laughs> the key here is that your hand pivots and your elbow bends and pivots. And so when you bend that elbow, bringing that cane up, but you also move the hand at the same time, that's where the explosiveness and the speed and the power come from. Now I'm going to reset the camera and you asked me about the nunchucks and I wanted to show you real quick before I jump into a different class. The question was, how do you stop the nunchuck from smashing your knuckles? You come down and I know that's really not what we started this video about. See that? And that hurts a little bit. I just smashed my knuckle. When you come down, you have to open your hand. See what that does? It's this motion. You bring it down, open the hand. As you go to the ground, that takes a lot of the energy. I'm trying to get that in the shot. There it is. It takes a lot of the energy out. I'm still smacking myself a little bit, but it's just because of the way I'm holding the camera. Now that's the speed chuck. The same thing is true if you're using the fighting chuck. This is the fighting chuck. And you bring it down, you're gonna open the hand like that. That's the natural break from here. And it's not that your thumb is coming up, it's that your hand is going down. I don't know if you can see that. But that's the answer, you asked me about that. Uh, the other question when we talk about self-defense and self-defense training tools is what's the best bag to use? Now, if I have my choice I would say all of them, right? And I do have my choice because I have the martial arts school. I don't have any students. COVID's kind of keeping everything uh, locked down. And the people who do come is, are such a small number that I have to make a lot of these videos. So I appreciate you guys being here. But I like the speed bag because it helps you get, get over the, when it comes back to your face, you stop flinching so much. It's good to develop endurance in your shoulders. I like these floor bags because you can put them anywhere. That has 275 pounds of weight. And then this is nice and squishy. Let me show you why. It's, it's how thick it is. Look at that. It's like inches and inches. So it's a safe, safe option. And it's an option you can have just about anywhere. And it's adjustable. Go up and down. It's height adjustable. So you can do a lot of different workouts. I like this one if you have a lot of experience and you know and you already have strong muscles and joints and you know how to use something like this because it doesn't move. But you have to, this is gonna build a lot of explosive power. It's almost like the makiwara, the old, uh, or the, uh, you know, the things that we punch to make the knuckles big and the hands firm and the bones dense. That's also gonna make the muscles more dense and your explosiveness in that ability. Plus you can, you can do side punches, hooks, do uppercuts. You can work the body, you can bob and weave, you can get in close. And so that's great for that. But specialty bag, don't waste your money on it if you're looking for something for the house unless you got a lot of money. This one, this is a teardrop. It's full of water, 100 pounds in this one. And these are cool too. I've been wanting to show you these. You take those bolts out and they all fold flat against the wall. That's a great training option for you. If you're looking for space savers, these all fold flat against the wall, and so the bag moves in and sits flat, and you pick up a lot more space. This one here, 100 pounds, it's rubber. I like it because it feels like punching somebody in the jaw for self-defense or the body for self-defense, and so you get a really good workout, and um, you know, you get, again, you can get in really close, you can work your uppercuts, work your body shots, great option. But if it's your only bag, I would say skip it and get either the floor bag or the hanging bag. I'm going to show you in a second. That's just another floor bag. This is the Muay Thai bag. The great thing about the Muay Thai bag is that you can blast, uh, yeah, 
Um, I'm sure I could too, technically, but the most I get are things like that. And that's mostly because it's cold right now and my skin dries out, but I get a little cracks. Once you've been doing it for a long time, your hands, my hands, I like, I, I can break open. I've been breaking open coconuts because I want to show you how to break a coconut with your hand. But I like to practice that. So I've been breaking coconuts lately. I break rocks, bricks, um, you know, river rocks, whatever it is. It's if you if you train correctly, you can do all those things. The most damage that you do when you first start is you rub the skin off of your knuckles because you're punching wrong. And what most people do is they punch and drop, punch and drop, and they don't even realize they're doing it. And it's the dropping, the rubbing their hand down that pulls the skin off, and that's where you get the most injury. I got this giant knuckle. I don't know if you can see it, right angle. That was an injury when I was a young man in the military, in the Marine Corps. And um, I was on the phone with somebody and I was all upset and I left and walked back to the room and I had broken my keys. My, key, my key, key to my room was on my dog tag. My dog tags were missing. I don't know what happened to him. I was so frustrated, moment of anger and immaturity. I punched the door, this uh, metal door, it, you know, military barracks. And it opened, I hit it so hard. I had been doing martial arts since I was a little kid. But <laughs> I created a lot of damage in there. And I remember I went to the, the Navy doctor, this mature woman, and, and she said, what did you punch, Marine? And I said, oh, no, I didn't punch. I slipped while I was doing push-ups. And she said, stop lying to me. You lost your temper. Quit acting like a baby. And I've never done it again because she called me out on it. And she was right. I was acting like a baby. I lost my temper. I punched it. Anyway, long story short, <laughs> too late, right? That's the saying is... Um, you're not going to damage your knuckles that much if you punch bare knuckle and you go slow at first, right? And there's some value to learning how to hit really hard with, without a glove on your hand. There's also value to using gloves. So do both gloves and wraps. You put gloves and wraps on and you can now hit a lot, a lot harder. You're going to de develop a lot more speed, strength, power, uh, understanding of fighting. So do both. Learn how to fight without anything on your hands and get the gloves on so you can hit five times harder. So you need to be able to do both. Yeah, um, perfect. So uh, if you look at the link below, if you're here in the States or I think Canada, that second link where it says get some martial arts equipment, there are all kinds of the floor bags. This is the company that makes them, Century. The link there goes to my store. They give me a little kickback. It's not much. It's not enough to pay the bills. <laughs> but I appreciate it when, when you guys do that. But this is one, you can also get the one that has, that looks like the, bo the body, and it's called, uh, I don't have any Russian links yet. I've, I've got friends in Russia, so I'll look, I'll ask those guys and see what it is that we can do there. Yeah, uh, uh, wraps are smart, right? And um, if you always only train with wraps or protective gear, that's not smart, but do both. I get, I get frustrated by this question all the time, but not this question, but the idea that people say, Never do this, never do that. Why? Or they'll say, this is wrong, that's wrong, what he said is wrong. I always say, it's not good, it's not bad, it's different, and I don't know. So I'm gonna do what works for me. I think that's a Bruce Lee, Jeet Kune Do thing too, right? Uh, take whatever works. But I say, experience as much as you can. And don't go by your own thoughts about what works, because sometimes you're tricking yourself. You don't really know enough. So listen to good instructors, try everything, and don't just dip your toe in, jump, jump in. It's like right now it's uh, 40 some degrees here this morning. We have a pool in the backyard. We're blessed to live in sunny South Florida, but it's cold. And if you go out and you dip your toe in it, you're not gonna wanna get in it. But your body's strong enough, you can jump in the water and you're gonna warm up in a couple of minutes and then you get a good workout in the pool. So don't tip your toe in, jump in, get your head wet. Once you get your head wet, then you start to understand a little bit better. All right. Yeah, come on. It's snowing and icing up, up north and it's cold down here. I'm walking around in, in this and the guys in the neighborhood are uh, saying, oh, you're making a mistake. And I'm, nah, your body needs some variation of temperatures. Allow, your, allow yourself to be cold, allow yourself to be hot for a few weeks. When temperatures change, you know, just suck it up and shiver a little bit and be, get, because the body needs that variation to keep your immune system strong. I'll get off my soapbox. So that's the Muay Thai bag. The Muay Thai bag, or the banana bag. The nice thing about this is that you can do your leg kicks, 
You can work low, you can work high. If you have collie sticks or our niece is screaming like I like to do, or you wanna use your cane or your Joe and you wanna do strikes in a wider range, this is perfect because you're, it's high and it's low. And then this one, that's my favorite. And then I have uh, uh, the, it's heavier cousin right there, the Everlast. And uh, just my personal opinion, brands like Tidal, Reyes, all of the boxing brands other than Everlast, <laughs> last a long time. Everlast, I think they probably have like a professional series, but most of their stuff, if you can avoid it, avoid it. Most of their stuff just falls apart so fast. But if you have, if you can get a Tidal, and you can usually get them for the same price. It's just harder to get these because um, they don't carry these in the stores like they do, like the Everlast. Everlast has all the stores, but it's also, like this is, you know, this is stitched really well. This is made out of leather. The other one's made out of uh, canvas, like a rubberized canvas. But this thing, when you first get them, these, th this one weighs 100 pounds. And the nice thing about like a, a hanging heavy bag and this is what I'm saying, like if you can only get two bags or if you can only get one bag, I would either get the traditional boxing heavy bag because you can do all your kicks on it and it's heavy enough that when it swings away and it comes back and then you hit it again. And this is the secret why boxers are so powerful and have so much strength in their knockout punch. Boxers, boxers have the best punches of anybody. I don't care what anybody says. They hit with so much force because they practice on these bags, these particular bags. And every time it swings, it's 100 pounds, swings away, come back in, and then you hit it, and that makes you stronger and stronger. Stronger than if you just punch the one that's on the wall, this one, right? That can give you strength, but it's nothing like the power you're gonna get when you start to hit this thing right here. And you can get it from the Muay Thai bag, but I, I just, it's just personal preference. This is the one I've used for the longest, longest time. Yeah, awesome. I mean, it, you know, and there's, there's no, everything is awesome. That's what you have to remember about martial arts training. Is that everything will benefit you if you jump in, get your head wet, and try it. Like the, the mukjong, the, um, what do they call it, the wooden dummy? You know, you see those in the movies. Jackie Chan always has a thing he did with it. I think Bruce Lee did it in Game of Death or whatever. You know, the wooden dummy. And it's got the little foot thing, and it's real popular in um, some kung fu. is mostly like Jeet Kune Do. Uh, Wing Chun, but uh, yeah, you, you guys should connect and trade. I, I like this to be a martial arts, uh, like an, a, a worldwide global virtual dojo where we're all learning from each other. So put those, put it in the comments below. If you, if you can make a video, upload it to YouTube, put the link below on how you make your uh, training stuff. I make, when I was a kid, you couldn't, you couldn't buy any of this stuff unless you were like a legit uh, gym because it was too expensive. Shipping was too expensive. Now you can get almost anything and everything off of Amazon or from the companies directly, free shipping. Um, but there's still something to be said for making your own training stuff. So, you know, I've, got, I've, I've been blessed to be able to get all this stuff and put this school back together, even though I don't have any students or not that many. But um, there's no reason why you can't get started where you are right now. You don't have to have the perfect equipment. In fact, if you get really good, yeah, if you, exactly, pantyhose and a soccer ball. Um, if you get really good with the homemade gear and you go up against the guy who has, it's like that, I don't know, it's fake, but the, the Rocky Four or Rocky fights the guy, sorry, Russia, but he fights the Russian bad guy who's, you know, Dolph Lundgren, um, who's a great martial artist, by the way. So he fights against Dolph Lundgren, and he was Taekwondo. Dolph Lundgren was like a Taekwondo fighter from way back when, before he got into the movies and stuff. But, um, but he, fights, he fights the Russian. The Russian's got all the, the high-tech equipment. He's got the bike. He's got the, you know, the patches everywhere. And Rocky is out in the middle of the outback, and he's chopping wood, and he's lifting big boulders on his shoulder, and he's running up the, the snow-covered mountain, and he's punching, you know, just like at the beginning, the first Rocky. He's punching the, uh, the side of beef breaking the ribs. And sometimes, you know, it's, it's that grit, it's the grit. And, and that's what you really need. People, people misunderstand what grit is too. Let me tell you real quick. Grit is passion and perseverance, but there's one more P that most people miss. Everybody says grit, passion, perseverance, grit, passion, perseverance. 
it's purpose. You have to have a reason behind what you're doing. You have to know it. You have to know your reason. And it could be your own personal reason. So identify passion, perseverance, purpose, and then you become gritty. And that doesn't matter what you're working out on. You just, yeah, perfect. That's what, that's what you have to do. You've got you to improvise. You've got to make it. And, um, and we almost get too soft in these cultures where we have all this stuff. I'd rather, I, I personally, I would rather be out in the woods somewhere kicking trees and punching trees. Um, but can't, I, can't, I can't pay the mortgage with that. Anyway, thanks so much. I'll see you guys in a little bit. I'm going to talk about um, probably the Bo staff next.